Egyptians are not white. We are black people. <laughs> In 1927, 25,000 people showed up for a public initiation ceremony of the Ku Klux Klan. That same year, Joe McCabe, one of the great mouthpieces of free thought in England, wrote that in ancient times, white men were just a bunch of semi-savages on the outskirts of the civilized world. If there had been anthropologists in Crete, Egypt, and Babylonia, they would have pronounced the white race as obviously inferior. Joe McCabe gave thousands of speeches in England and is considered one of the great mouthpieces of free thought in England. Now he's largely forgotten. I wonder why. Or you are just simply European that has moved into Egypt and stayed there and had kids there and kept being white. Today you guys will see for yourselves that there's nothing we've said about Egypt, the rest of Africa, or the world that was not already known to the Eurocentrics, not already known to the authors of this mess we find ourselves in today. Let's get started. Egyptians are not white. They are black. They never knew that we would see these things. All of this stuff was written in literature for them and by them. We were hardly even allowed to read and given a trash education. But they had no idea what the future would hold and that somebody like me would be here kept being white. Why have you changed your story? We all know why. We're gonna get deeper into that and see why they did that. We are black people. Now, there are also Egyptians out there, many uh, Egyptians that are Christians and Coptics especially, run around and say that Egyptians are white. To you also, I want to say that Egyptians are black. Egyptians are not white. Grace Beardsley wrote that at the Boston Museum, there were black people. So stop lying. Excellent portraits of an Egyptian and Ethiopian prince and princess dating about 3000 BC. So the question we have to ask is, what happened to those statues? Where are these portraits? Where are they at? an Egyptian and Ethiopian prince and princess dating to about 3000 BC. The Euro critics today will tell us that there was no such thing as that. George Reisner, the man himself, called these same portraits the earliest known portraits of Negroes. You guys are going to be hearing a whole lot about Negroes today. And let's remember the context that we're using this term. We need to remember that this so-called Negro term that they invented was nothing more than a little jail that they created to keep so-called black people pinned in so that we participate in nothing. Okay, you guys, this doesn't mean agreedo. This doesn't mean aboriginal and all this other stuff you guys are talking about. You guys know what a Negro is. They know what a Negro is. Darker and darker and darker. In 1875, while we were busy dealing with the reconstruction of the United States, Birch was over in England telling his white brothers that the 18th dynasty saw a negress mount the throne of Egypt and subsequently we saw intermarried with foreigners and the features can be beheld in the sculptures which shows their mixed origins. You can look at me and say, well, you're not black, right? I'm not black, but I'm not white. I have been mixed. I am a descendant of mixed Egyptians, mixed with European colonizers. He goes on to say that our queen, almost Nefertari, was most definitely a Negro and probably the daughter of an Ethiopian king. Kush. Kush is the nation of Ethiopia. He wrote that in Egypt from the earliest times, page 83, now we have to ask ourselves, why did they change the story? The same man that wrote that was a renowned dramatist and the Lord Mayor of London. Now they pretend he doesn't exist. Maspero is one of the top names in old school Egyptology. He wrote in his ancient history of the peoples of the Orient that the highly mixed character at Thebes 
gave rise to the various races of Egyptians who are all blended together. There are Egyptians who have green eyes and like really light brown hair and I always wonder well, why do they look different from me? If you are white and you are in Egypt and you're Christian and Coptic especially, I'm here to tell you that Egyptians are not white. You are white because you are a descendant of a white European colonizer. Contrast this today with what the Euro critics say when they say there was no mixing. In fact, my siblings are much darker than me. 1854, when we were still receiving whoopings on the plantation, one person by the name of Osborne wrote in the monumental history of Egypt that King I his tomb, the most remarkable thing in it, was the fact that he looked like a Negro. Mixed with European colonizers. George Rawlinson was an Oxford fellow, a tutor, a Camden professor, a Harold Dottis translator, and he wrote the Harold Dottis article in the Encyclopedia Britannica. In 1859, he said that the marriage of Amos with his black queen is thought to have united the two families of the 15th and 18th dynasties. There was also another queen, he says, Ahata, a white woman, and an Egyptian, who was also represented with the black queen on the same monuments at Thebes and in the British Museum, but in an inferior position. And this is readily explained by the greater importance of the Ethiopian princess. Let me be the first to say, that we know how these people like inserting magical Caucasians, so that might not have been a white woman, but either way, we see that the Ethiopian princess is of much greater importance. But again, this black queen gets no play, and all we get is another picture of Rahotep. Now, the 18th, the 18th dynasty has a reputation for being one of majestic splendor something that the Euro critics can only dream of. And we know the entire time that they've already known that the Ethiopians, the Nubians, were the gears that turned the clock towards that splendor. So stop lying. The 18th dynasty and its artistic beauty is something that can't be ignored. Absolutely nothing of superior quality has been found with the Anglo-Saxons, the Celtics, or any of the other so-called. Darker and darker and darker. Nothing of superior quality has been found anywhere in Northern Europe, anywhere in England, anywhere in France, anywhere in Spain. You are white because you are a descendant of a white European colonizer. Or you are just simply European that has moved into Egypt and stayed there and had kids there and kept being white. I guess that this is why McCabe said in 1927 in his Key to Culture book three that white men were just a bunch of semi-savages on the outskirts of the civilized world. And you know, that goes hand in hand with what I've been telling you guys this whole time that they have absolutely nothing to do with anything in ancient history. And so I don't even know why they talk. I don't know why they run their face or why they're always giving a lecture. Oh wait, now I know why. We see it right here on our screen. This man needs no introduction. Sir Petrie himself. So what the hell did he have to say? In the Making of Egypt, page 158, 1939, written in London, Petrie says that Egypt was hopeless until a fresh Ethiopian invasion stimulated it, as in earlier instances. And here, he was speaking on the mighty 18th dynasty. As in, the 18th dynasty was a Nubian dynasty. Unfortunately for the Euro critics, Flinders Petrie has a lot more to say. Let's move on to the third dynasty. Let's ask Sir Petrie. Why did he write in 1906 in Researches in Sinai, page 43, that the so-called founder of the pyramid age of the old kingdom was strongly Ethiopian in character, even more so than Shabaka, that great Ethiopian king of the 25th dynasty. I repeat, Flinders Petrie said in 1906, 
as we had to go through the back door in the back of the bus that the founder of the pyramid age so-called was strongly Ethiopian in characters when it comes to his portrait my question is what portrait is this what was Flinders Petrie looking at and we see what he says here he says that our king Sanat was a very savage character. But I've already made my decision. I'm going to pulverize you until there's nothing left. You dare say that to me? Use your head. Do you actually think I would stay loyal to you after you blew up the planet I was destined to rule? And he also had dark brown skin. Petrie goes on to say here that the second dynasty was overthrown by Ethiopians and the great art of the fourth and fifth dynasties arose out of this mixture. I repeat, the second dynasty was overthrown by the Ethiopians and the great art of the greatest period of Egyptian history arose out of this mixture. An Afrocentric didn't invent that idea. Ask Flinders Petrie, why was he saying that in 1906 while his white brothers were making us go on the back of the bus? Dramatic finish! And I hope you're reborn as someone good this time. You see, they had a problem. So eventually after that, what they did was they found a 10,000 year old Cro-Magnon skull and now they say, that's a knot. We are black people. J.A. Rogers writes in Sex and Race, Volume 1, that Sanat was a full-blooded Negro. Mixed with European colonizer. Now, if you recall earlier, Gaston Maspero was talking about how mixed the people were there in Egypt. You can look at me and say, well, you're not black. Right, I'm not black, but I'm not white. I have been mixed. I am a descendant of mixed Egyptians. Speaking on the 25th dynasty here, he says that black women in the harems multiplied and that not long after that, even the highest classes of the nation came to resemble those of the tribes of equatorial Africa. And that Taharka is a good example of this that his face presents the characteristic traits of the black race. Now, Taharka is mentioned in the book of Isaiah. You might wanna look him up. You wanna see a face from the Bible? There you go. But getting back to Mesperso, here he has a little bit of that cognitive dissonance because he's here saying that, you know, people looking like equatorial Africa all of a sudden started showing up into the higher classes. They say that people tend to make their gods in the image of themselves. So let's take a look at Bess. In 1891, Paul Martial wrote, He is not the caricature of an Egyptian or of an Ethiopian, nor is he Arabian. He was a Negro. I repeat, he was a Negro. Keep that under wraps. Therefore, I would like to ask the Eurocentrics, why was your daddy Paul Martial telling us that this Egyptian god was a Negro? The eighth volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica tells us that intermarriages, however, gradually had their effect. And after the revolt in the reigns of Ptolemy IV and V, we find the Greek and the Egyptian elements closely intermingled. Because you are a descendant of a white European so what we see is more evidence of these Egyptians mixing in with the other people coming in. Or you are just simply European. Livingstone, I presume? Yes, that Livingstone. Said that the Negro face reminded him more of the monuments of ancient Assyria than what they imagined in their Eurocentric fantasies. I repeat, Livingstone said that the Negro face as he saw it reminded him more of the monuments of ancient Assyria than what they imagine in their mind. And my question once again for the Euro critics is why did your daddy say that? And why'd you change your story? On page 472 of the Uganda Protectorate, written in 1902 by Sir Harry Johnston, called the foremost authority on the African Negro, 
said that the Hamite, the Negroid stock, was the main stock of the ancient Egyptians. I repeat, the Negroid stock was the main stock of the ancient Egyptians and is best represented at the present day by the Somali, the Gala, and the blood of Abyssinia and Nubia. And so, I asked the Eurocritics, why did your daddy, Sir Harry Johnston, the foremost authority on the African Negro, say that the Negroids were the main stock of the ancient Egyptians? And why do you keep coming out with a Eurocentric DNA test trying to tell us something different? There's nothing that they can say. Let's go back to their other daddy, Sir Flinders Petrie, writing in 1901 in the Royal Society of Arts Journals, meaning no black people were reading this at the time, okay? that the pharaohs of the 10th dynasty were of the Gala type and the Galas are clearly what are known in our day as Negroes. I repeat, the pharaohs of the 10th dynasty were of the Gala type and the Galas are clearly what are known in our day as Negroes. I did not write that. Flinders Petrie wrote that. And I'm here to ask the Euro critics once again, why do you guys keep playing these games with us? Yes. He saw the exact living type of a statue of ancient Libya and discovered that the man was an American mulatto. This was a guy that he saw on a train. He says this guy looks exactly like a statue that he saw from ancient Libya. And that guy was an Afro-American, a Negro century. Please, if you believe you can defeat me, then you're more delusional than ever. You know one thing about Sergi? He didn't like magical Caucasians, but he did write an interesting thing in the Mediterranean races Page 243, written in 1901, he compared a picture of Ramses II with that of Mutesa, who was a Negro king of Uganda, and said that it showed a marked resemblance. I repeat, compared a picture of Ramses II, the great Ramses, to that of a Negro king. Mutesa, have a good day, you eurocentrics. See you later. We are black people. We need to remember also that these people were there when they found all this stuff, all right? Let's remember that they've seen things that we have never seen, and they've also destroyed things that we don't know they got destroyed. Let's remember that. And you guys can see that I'm not lying when I said that their punishment will continue. Here we see a picture of two mulattoes. If all we had from these people was their bones, the Eurocentrics would declare them instant Caucasians and never Negro, despite the fact that when they lived, they were nothing more than Negro. In fact, my siblings are much darker Dark. than me, skinned, very melancholy. One of the things that helped Egypt to become one of the greatest military powers in the ancient world was iron smelting. This document, The Metals in Antiquity, which was a Huxley Memorial Lecture, written in 1912 on page 285 we see that this early african iron smelting was known in egypt and is well shown i repeat early african iron smelting was known in egypt and is well shown now of course they never show us now it's all disappeared by this point but they do say that this is reproduced from base reliefs on a stone now in the egyptian collection in florence i said well that's lost in the back of the museum forever. Unfortunately, we're not able to get any uh, photos or details of this, but we do have this description here which that a youth head and outstanding ears characterizing him as an Ethiopian is featured. Now characterize this. <laughs> Now let's compare this to what the Eurocentrics tell us now. After everything we've heard that a so-called Ethiopian was not seen in Egypt unless he was a slave or was brought there by an Arab as a black slave. Now you guys see why these people are constantly talking about African Americans and Egyptians all the time. Because even in 1901, Flinders Petrie, the man himself, saw an American black man and started thinking about ancient Libya. And he was there. Sergi said that Ramses II looked like this Negro king. What I want to know is, what the hell was Sergi looking at? 
because we certainly don't get to see it. All we ever get is a model head, a broken statue, or a destroyed statue. Fake mummies, fake statues, fake everything. And then they laugh at us. They laugh at us while their Eurocentric masters tell us that the pharaohs of the 10th dynasty were of the Gala type and the Galas are clearly what are known in our day as Negroes, the 10th dynasty. And I'm asking you guys again, why'd you say that? No, don't freeze up! Go! go! <laughs> how, how dare you! You'll pay! You'll pay for this! What? what? Sir Harry Johnston was a British knight. He's the kind of guy that you guys would open the door for. And he straight up wrote to his white brothers that the Negroid stock was the main stock of the ancient Egyptians. Petrie himself said that stock was the dynastic race. So what did they do? Start talking about magical Caucasians and make them the dynastic race instead. Now you see why they punish us. Now you see why they got fake statues. If they made a movie about Livingstone's life people would go and watch that movie. And I'm here to tell you today that he said the Negro face as he saw it reminded him more of ancient Assyria than what people imagine in their minds. You can also read that in the Zambesi and its tributaries, page 526, written in 1866. This is why I say that everything that the Euro critics are complaining to the Afrocentrics about you already said it before we were even born. So what are you talking about? The question is, why are you changing your story? We know about intermarriage, we know about mixing, and we also know that Cleopatra was nothing more than a mulatto. If you are white and you are in Egypt and you're Christian and Coptic especially, I'm here to tell you that Egyptians are not white. You are white because you are a descendant of a white European colonizer. If you are a white supremacist watching my video, I want to ask you why your granddaddy Birch, who was the Lord Mayor of London, why did this man say in 1875 that our queen, almost Nefertari, was a Negro and was probably the daughter like of an Ethiopian king? Egyptian Museum in Cairo, you will see in the chamber of uh, King Tut An Amun, which y'all call Tut and Kamen, is a black. They're all black, black people. So stop lying, please. Oh, I know why you said it. So you could tell us that the Nubians were nothing but slaves, copied the Egyptians, and were just one of the Egyptians. Egyptians are not white. We are black people. Masperso. Gaston Masperso is one of your grandmasters. And he had a whole lot to say about all this mixing going on in Egypt. Or you are just simply European that has moved into Egypt and stayed there and had kids there and kept darker being white. And darker, dark, and dark, skinned, very melanated. Many years later, I would be born, I would put a video out that talked about the two races of Egyptians. But instead, the Eurocentric lecturer who gives you the never ending lectures will tell you that there was no mixing, there was no invasions, and they don't know what you're talking about. When George Reisner first realized how fabulous the Nubian civilization was, the first thing out of his mouth was, this obviously was a Caucasian civilization. And he had to say that because in 1929, laid eyes on an Egyptian and Ethiopian prince and princess that they dated to 3000 BC. That's the beginning of the old king. So what Dr. Reisner, one of the grand masters of Egyptology says, is that the earliest known portraits of Negroes are found in the old kingdom. And now you guys finally have an answer to why they have fake statues, fake mummies, and fake artifacts. And let's not pretend that that doesn't exist in Eurocentrics because you know it does and you show a lot of them. Faded statues, tanning theories, we've heard it all. We are the Grand Masters. Joseph McCabe let us know in 1927, one of the greatest mouthpieces of free thought in England. His words just reverate through time, man. White men were just a bunch of semi-savages on the outskirts of the civilized world. It wasn't a 
the Black Panthers saying that this was a white man who was well respected by other rich white men. If there had been anthropologists in Crete, you know, they hang all over Crete. Sorry, that wasn't you. Egypt, sorry, that wasn't you either. Babylon, they didn't even know you. They would have pronounced you obviously inferior. They are hunter-gatherers. They travel light, their children with them, one meal away from starvation. They are never able to settle down. Here's the thing, if an Afrocentric said that, he would get fired from his job and lose his house. And so, black people, I just wanted to show you guys what these guys were saying amongst themselves in secret. When they were telling us to go in the back door, they were having their Freemason meetings, busting out their pamphlets, their notes, everything that they were writing amongst each other, not allowing us to read a damn thing, giving us a trash education so that we could barely read. Not knowing that someday that a guy like me would gather what they were saying all together that lets us know and confirms what we and I have been saying this entire time, that the Ethiopians are the African ancestor of Egypt. When we fast forward in time, still got a long way to go in this fight. But the Eurocentrics are on the ropes, especially when your daddy already gave up the ghost a long time ago. Dramatic finish!